Well, you had reflective, reflective and refractive. Uh, the, 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 the little scale patterns on the outside of the shaft are very tight to the shaft. They're so tight, in fact, that, that when you shine a light, they reflect light. They're, they're like a, uh, they're not, they're not rough enough, uh, to dull the, the light. Uh, so the, uh, another place I have is when it walks by some debris and, 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 and you can't see the feet, but you can see the rest of her. Uh, the the right mm-hmm. leg takes on the color of the debris huh. when it, when hmm. it passes by. Uh, knowing that now, and that's a that's a new discovery. Knowing that now, you've got to ask yourself how many could be just standing out there by a tree. Well, and you know, no I've, way you've I've been up in the in the Great Lakes area for all, my whole life, and I you know I've seen enough loons and other waterfowl that I've seen turn in water. And if their if their feathers and things like that get wet in a certain way, and there's just a slight breeze on the lake, you can lose that bird just quickly, just because of the reflectiveness. You can almost see. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you, if you got if you got some kind of little mechanism like that, it, it really it, it's not like it's not like that. It's it's cloaking or predator type stuff. But right. the general the general foliage color or tree colors might might you know, flood then those hairs enough that if it stood still, you 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 lose it. You couldn't find it. Right. Um, right. Right. So, uh, I suggest you go there to see an example of that. Um, you know, I, I talked about that in Texas this past weekend, and um, had a real good presentation there to over a thousand people, and 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 I hope they got a good understanding that you know if you know your quarry. You can have some more success. You're better chances of success, and right. if you know that they can do that. You know it helps. You know the the rather than think that he's gone, just hang around for a little while, see if he, if he moves. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you know he and, he may and, not and be how, gone at all. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and how well, many and of there, us and there are already have, animals in nature we have to do that with now. I mean, sometimes it takes a yep. while. We were talking a, a week or so ago, MK and. You know, I pointed out it's like, you know, it's things with wolverines or other animals that are out in the bush, they can be extremely elusive, and sometimes you have to pay close. It's porcupines that I've been walking 10 feet away from all of a sudden walk out of the brush, and I, I didn't even hear them, you know, rustle anything. And before I know it, they're they're there in front of me, and my dog's going ballistic. It, 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 you know, camouflage, that word, and as it exists, I mean, there are military purposes for it. They, we, we use it ourselves as hunters, uh, people that go fishing, even, the type of equipment that's used, depending on the line that you use in the water. I mean, it, it, it's it's sort of a, a, a natural forming thing out of necessity in nature. It's it, it's a requirement almost at some points in, 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 in many species around the world in, in order to do and live uh, the way that we do. So it's fascinating. Right. It's it, is, fascinating. Oh, it, is, yeah. it is not likely that Patty was alone. It's 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 very it's, it's so not likely. Um, uh, well, really, she would. Yeah. Right. When you when you both say that that exact same thing, it seems like the movement of it is so odd that 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 it must have seemed like she they came upon her. She just went. I have to get out of here, and without even thinking twice, up and left. Yeah. Well, and well, and here's you know, if I may just uh, just jump in here really quickly, MK. One of the things that I've heard and actually looked at uh, with some colleagues on the Patterson footage is, as you know, right at the beginning of the film where where they're coming into the sandbar, into the clearing, and Patty is first spotted, uh, for lack of a better word, more to the left, uh, coming, not coming out of the trees, but standing you know, with the trees, you know, heavy timber behind her. And there seemed to be some type of movement in the brush where in the footage that we were watching, something appeared to stick its head up out of the brush and then it stuck its head back down. Now, again, we were not looking at the original film. It it could be a... uh, uh, you know, a glitch in the footage that we saw, something that got added. You know, as you know, 
there have been many generations of the original footage. And but the suggestion was made that, like any other wild creature, if Patty was not alone, if there were younger uh, Bigfoots there or some type of family group, she was leading Roger and Bob away because the other Bigfoots were where they were first spotted. And, she, and it, what plays into this, which I, I have always found interesting, and you would certainly know more about this, MK, is that a, my understanding is that when Roger jumped off his horse and grabbed the camera, he shouted to Bob Gimlin, cover me, there's two more of them, or, or words to that effect. Well, the, the, this is, the, those, are, those things are often very hard to, to nail down, uh, as, mm -hmm. as in, you know, as, to be sure what was said. Uh, for a good while there after the filming, it varied quite a bit from interview to interview together. And you have the story we have today, but even that story is it's not to be relied on. Uh, if, if you're a film analyst, you don't rely on the story at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you rely on you the have film. To, you have to, right. You have, right. You have to say what is on this film. Uh, mm -hmm. And you let the film tell you uh, the, the the story uh, originally was that they took the film and then they rode out of there. And, you know, that's 25 miles back in the middle of nothing. Mm -hmm. And they went all the way to the coast and sent the film off to his brother-in-law in, in uh, up in, uh, I think, Seattle. Uh, or somewhere up there, yes, Yakima, or somewhere, maybe in Yakima, yeah. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it was Yakima. Mm -hmm. you say it? Yeah. So, it, uh, at that point in time, you know, that, that breaks down immediately because that that type of film could, could only be processed in two places in the United States with a minimum of two weeks to turn it around. And mm -hmm. and people, people in the know began to question that. They began to just be tight-lipped about it and not say anything. Uh, right, right. And then they, right. Then, they say, then they say they made it back to the film site and casted tracks before dark, yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. which is yeah. not, it's not, uh, you know. Well, the, and, yeah, yeah. No, and the chronology it, has it, always puzzled me. It's, there's something, something doesn't make sense because, and you're absolutely right, MK, film of that stock in 1967 could not have been processed overnight. And the well, they, 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 they allegedly, allegedly, they took it on a Friday and showed it on a Sunday. Right, right. Uh, and they, and they did, definitely did show it on a Sunday. The, the, the question is, did they take it on a Friday? It's not possible. Right. Uh, so so they, they, they just pretty much just got quiet about that and wouldn't answer any questions about anything to do with the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the film itself shows it to have been taken at a different time. Uh, it's the shadow. Well, it's, uh, yes. you mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not interested. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're talking about you, you have to look at the film, and and I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I just this is just so fascinating for me, um, and and I think this is one of the the aspects of the film is that makes perhaps it a little bit more troublesome for for some researchers and some enthusiasts is that th there seems to be this confusion or this it's it's not clear when that film was actually shot. And I have heard a rumor that the film was actually shot in 1964, that it was filmed three years earlier, but not presented or made public until October of 1967. And I don't know if well, that's don't true. You think, I don't, don't know if it's not true. Well, so Fred, don't ahead, you think that's possible? That's possible. You know, it, there's, oh, there's absolutely no date. possible. Uh, yeah. the, the only de only date you have is sometimes they put the date on the leader, you know, on the end of the roll. But you can mm -hmm. you can when you make your when you make your copy, you can put any date you want on there. 
You know, it's it's uh you're up you're up to you you just have their stories basically. I mean, uh, the film is not a continuous piece of film either. It's the the first it's divided into several what I call walk sequences. Uh, the first walk sequence, she's walking straight away toward the tree line, and then all of a sudden she pitches forward. Her rear end is pointing straight at the camera, and that's it. When when mm-hmm. it starts back. She's out on the sandbar going upstream in a wide open stand. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so in the interlude between those two is anybody's guess. Uh, you know, you mm-hmm. can do it. You can stop your camera and start it again five years from now mm-hmm. if you wanted to. You know what I mean? So, uh, none of that has been explained, but, but this is. All I have to say about that is that the film is so good that it does not need to be explained. Mm-hmm. It, it does not need, it needs no one to vouch for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't need Roger Patterson. It doesn't need Bob Gimlin. It, it is so good. When you stabilize it, put it in its best form, uh, there's no excuse for it not being accepted. And, and so, so, the people who don't accept it should have to give an explanation as to why. Because it's a it's a darn good film of a it's it's got so many things going for it. It, it you have you, you should have a have to have a real good reason why you say I don't accept this film. You know. Mm-hmm. Other than uh, normal public um, conje- other than no- normal public conjecture and sort of group think is you know, well, I mean, you, you can, uh, Roger had a bad credit score is not good enough. You know, right. that's not good enough. I'm not following you. Well, forgive me. Uh, well, they always claim that Roger had didn't pay his bills and stuff. That was the skeptics always did that. You know, he was he was needing oh, the money, okay. so he hosts the family. <laughs> you you got to have money to produce a film like that. <laughs> Well, that's just it, yes, and that's yes. where, again, the, the, that sort of criticism fades into the ether because it's like what has been created still by anybody that has worked in the film industry, the movie industry, and, like, you could chalk it up to say, well, it's, it's the time frame, it's the primitiveness of the way that they shot it that makes it work. So, No, because when you look at the analysis work that you've done on it, you can, like you say, instead of figuring out what the allegory is or the stories or how that all adds up, the film speaks for itself. There's a lot of things, whether it's cut into those three segments or not, there's so many things about it that make you stand back and go, wait a minute. There's a lot of unnatural things about this. Uh, What am I seeing here? All those basic questions that sort of pop into your mind when you have interesting natural phenomenon occur to you, even something as simple as uh, other, other stuff that happens in nature. So, it, 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 again, it, it, like you say, it all has that same, you know, what am I looking at? And and, and, and that's why I guess I, I appreciate, we both do, Sanjay and I and many other people, the work that you've been doing on it, because it's not like you're saying, well, I know the story is to be this, so the math is this, and this is why all those things are true. No, you're saying, well, let's have a look, a hard look at, at, at what all this is and analyze it based on all this new technology that we have. Thank God that we have it to be able to do this kind of stuff and, and look at stuff. I mean, your applications in astronomy came into a completely different field, so now we have the ability to, you know, Look at this in a, in a completely different light, and I think I think it's 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 important. Even like the Friedman footage, as grainy as it can be sometimes, because it's shot with a video a video camera instead of film, it still has those same qualities to it that that the PG film has. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's 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 why I say if, it, if you get there's a threshold where it becomes an embarrassment to keep turning the thing away and turning it down. You know, uh, uh, you know, at, at this point in time with what I've done, gotten done with this new processing, uh, that there's some explaining to do if they don't accept it, <laughs> you know, uh, you see things going on there that, I mean, that, you know, you recognize, you know, you see the shoulder blades moving and stuff, but that's not a, a, a suit. Uh, except that it's a mm-hmm. birthday suit. 
But so if we asked ourselves, right. if, if we asked ourselves the question, and if it was shot earlier, like Sanjay said, you know, if if that was the case, or even two years earlier, or a year earlier, uh, would it? Do you think on um, speculation? Obviously, is it because again, people wouldn't believe us? Uh, we can't understand exactly ourselves what we saw. Maybe we should develop it now and find out what's going on. Then actually realizing what they had went public with it. Like, I mean, there's so many things again in, in inside of what if, but at the same time, you know, when you, we all have our own experiences, sometimes it's really hard to articulate exactly what's happening. Who do we tell? That's one of the reasons I reached out to people like you or Binder Nagel. It was it was the same thing. I wanted to talk to somebody that had a sort of steadfast approach to say, well, well, ask yourself these questions, or or do some other research, or have some people come out and have a look at what you know you you saw or what happened to you. So you know, I, I think all of that is is super important when when thinking about the grander picture behind it all. Well, yeah, uh, I, I think so. In connection in connection to the Patterson film itself, that that. It has it has leaped across that flesh that threshold. Uh, it it is it is easily recognizable to be authentic, and so uh, at 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 this point in time, they're going to have to be just taken out of the loop. So the, the the people that are paid to be skeptics should not be allowed to comment on. <laughs> well, and there are paid it, skeptics, so. Yeah, right. There, there certainly is, I and mean, they should not be allowed to comment on it because it's, it gets destructive, and it stands in the way of of the discovery. Right. right. And and they they have right. no, they have no particular qualifications at all, other than how to shake their head no. Uh, right. So you know, there's you can say flaming skeptic, you can say teetering skeptic, you can say all kinds. Of, skepticism itself is not a harmful thing, within reason. But uh, uh, when you don't 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 even offer the Patterson film up to a show that has a skeptic that's just going to say no. Uh, that that's not that, that that's that's a destructive thing to do at this point in time. It's clear what's on that film, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, you don't right. give those people that, that that opportunity to do harm. Right. And for years, that right. that paid skepticism has also, inside of a conversation with just anybody about it, they'd be like, well, it's just a man in a monkey suit. That's what everybody says. But, well, well, I, my my reply is, I'm not asking your opinion. Right, exactly. And that's and, and, and inevitably, sorry to say, but it's true. I, I mention people like you because of that work and a whole other generation of people that didn't grow up in the 60s and 70s that weren't a real part of that big explosion of that phenomenon – are now looking at it, 18-year-olds, 20-somethings, and they're all looking at it with a different sense of a set of eyes. Uh, I've seen more people mm-hmm. interested in, in in that age group than people that have already been kind of conditioned to the idea that, well, we've seen all the shows, you know, we know what it is. But no, I mean, there are so many other things to look at, right? Right. Well, I agree. We had over, we had over 1,000 people attend that conference down there and and there was a lot of people attending it that had their eyes wide open, you know, uh, and open minds, and that that's what it, you know that's a very gratifying thing because we're not stuck uh, with uh, with with uh, people behaving as if they were bobbleheaded dolls, you know. They only their heads only shake back and forth in no other way, you know. Uh, it's their minds made up already, and so they the people that saw the film at the conference there were moved by it, and and that's very gratifying because some of those people are going to jump into the fray, and they're going to bring whatever talents they have to the table, and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and boots on the boots on the ground is what it's going to take ultimately. But this film this film should not be put into a category of 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 a myth or anything like that. I, I would fight tooth and nail to keep that from that. It, it's a that's a ruinous thing. It, it's it's destructive. It, it's, it's it puts barriers up for the discovery and discourages people to 
go looking. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that's you know you might you might get to t- tell that I'm I get a little impassioned about that. Um, I once had a skeptic tell me, he says, "Well, there's no degree of zoology. There's no they don't teach that officially. It's no degree." And I said, "Is there a degree for skepticism?" <laughs> no. <laughs> so I said, "Well, we're, we're even then." Bravo, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> it's it's it's. That they're not being fair at all. You don't let an unfair person have his way with it. Mm-hmm. Him. I, I disagree with that strongly. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and we all right. know that myth has a sense of truth to it. Look at Heinrich Schliemann. I mean, nobody believed the ancient city of Troy was real. They said it was Troy. a myth, and Schliemann said, yes, no, I'm going to follow this trail of evidence, and sure enough, Mm-hmm. Not only did he find the ancient you city of it. Troy, but developed a whole new method to archaeology as a result of that. So I think, yes. I, again, that open-mindedness is, is integral. <laughs> well, and to well, it's not even, you know, just, well, go ahead. Oh, um, <clears throat> just a couple of things, MK, I wanted to add, and Ed, and also to you. Um, in, the, in I believe it's in Honduras. I could be right. I, I think it's Honduras. They, you know, for for years there was a persistent rumor of a city of the monkey god, uh, of a city of uh, inhabitants who were giants, who were giant monkeys, but walked and behaved like men. And for for decades, it was believed that this was just you know some sort of fanciful sort of legend, old wives' tale, or you know what have you. And lo and behold, they went looking for it, and lo and behold, they found it. And uh, you know, astonishing discoveries in the, I, be- I want to say it's Honduras, in the Honduran jungle. And it's now actually called the City of the Jaguar God and is a protected site. So, you know, all of this does, you know, it does happen. You know, things are real. Think, you know, myths grow out of legends, grow out of histories, and, you know, who's to say that the stories we were told as children of the boogeyman uh, in, the, in the woods that's going to grab us if, we're, if we don't behave it is not based on similar stories or similar experiences from our own, you know, historical past. Um, but MK, I did want to. I had another question for you. I, I um, you had mentioned uh, one of the things that I remembered uh, from your presentation at Salt Fork was just this beautiful uh, close-up and astonishing detail of Patty's head, and and I remember quite vividly that uh, you were able to determine that she had braids. And I, I would just like to ask, yeah, you know, are, yeah. are there more, more features and more aspects of Patty, whether moving or physically, in appearance that, that you could share with us this evening, please? Well, I, I, she's got kind of a top knot, you know, uh, uh, a little a little bun-like thing up at the top of the head that, that uh, some of the hair is pulled up and then tied off mm-hmm. as a ponytail. Uh, Oh, I see. But not all of it. Not all of it. Just some of Uh it. It's very rudimentary. Uh, She's got some little dreadlock or a braid, uh, and the wind picks it up and blows it across her top of it, picks it up off of her ear. For uh, a couple of frames, you can see the ear pretty well. Uh, And Mm -hmm. it doesn't, the ear doesn't, the ear doesn't have much of a a lobe. It's kind of just like a rounded ear. I don't really know uh, what that means. You know, uh, I'm not an expert on anything like that, but uh, it's just pretty much what's, what I it's what I feel. And uh, that that little braid kind of rests over the ear for a few frames, and uh, if she looks back at the camera, you get a pretty good look at it. You can tell it's got a little herringbone design, you know, into the braid, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and to me, you know, that, that kind of, uh, betrays a a culture, uh, uh, however rudimentary yes. it is. It's it's above an animal. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Then anytime that you style your hair or pull it back or make it easier to manage. Uh, I remember Bob Gimlin told me that she had hair just like an Indian's. Huh. Um, yeah. Uh, and that always stuck with me. Okay. Yeah. So that's where it really goes from being animal to anthropological. It's more like indicative of human behavior based on emotion and, you know, many of the things that are like almost like cultural in their own circles. Yeah. Bob Bob told me that if he had it to do over again, that he would throw his gun down and try to talk to her. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that, then I can those are the exact words. Yeah. That words to you. Yeah. But do you think she uh, would have yeah. given him the time of day anyway? <laughs> I, I doubt it. Uh, yeah. She might have stopped the butt hole in Oh dear. Oh, you know. Um, I, you know, MK. I'd like to talk to you. There's another aspect of the film that's always intrigued me, and I know that when you presented it at Salt Fork, you. Um, discussed it uh, in part there as well. And that is uh, the um, the knee, her right knee. And there's that moment where she turns towards the camera and, and something happens to her knee. And I know you've done a lot of research on that and I'm sure you've done you know even more since then. Is, is there, can you talk to us about that, please? Yeah, it involves uh... It buckles to the inside, and, and, it, and it just just briefly, she regains control. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the femoral muscles come in a, in a pack of four, and you, you don't have to have, you can lose one and still walk, but mm-hmm. you, if, if you lost it, if you lost it suddenly, then you, for a, split, for a step or so, you'd, you'd have to, you know, kick in, and then you'd pull it back and get control again. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what I'm seeing there, it's, it, that she had some damage done right there at that split second to one of those pods. And so she just, she just yeah, regained and, control and kept walking. Uh-huh. And, you know, there, there's, again, there seems to be this rumor uh, in certain portions or certain circles of the Bigfoot community that uh, the damage, the visible damage to her knee, or the visual display of the hair flying up on her knee, uh, is due to a rifle shot that she was actually shot at uh, during the but, filming. Yeah, yeah. And if I, I don't know if that's true, I certainly don't want to claim that that's true. But uh, is that response on her leg consistent with a rifle shot? Well, it is consistent with. Uh, now, as to what exactly happened, I don't know. You got got you got at least two two people there with guns by their own admission. Right. Now, if if you disregard the story and just look at what's on the film, but you said something happened to her right there on that leg. Yes. Because uh-huh. it made her, it made her knee buckle. Uh, right. So, right. But 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 there again, you don't you don't really have a right. To, to reach out and create a story. Uh, right, absolutely. Uh, you can say, yes, 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 it's consistent with that. Uh, I was told some other things by Mrs. Patterson herself, you know, that I filled in a lot of the blanks, but, you know, that's for another time and place. It's, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, I, I know the story in, in, it, in its basic form. But mm-hmm. that explains everything about why it's out there and everything. But um, mm-hmm. you know, it's a it's a very in depth thing, and 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 it's almost like uh, uh, well, it's like getting in hot water. You know, people aren't just aren't ready for the complete thing. But I think uh-huh. that people are open open for that being an authentic Sasquatch. So that's where I'm going. Okay. And um, yeah, there's another, uh, we have a question from the chat room. Uh, let me just ask it here. Uh, this is from Digger Dog. And uh, Digger Dog would like to know, uh, what would be the motivation to lie about the film date? And I'm not really quite sure what to say to that. 
Well, uh, I, I mean, uh, w- whether it's lying or not, or even a uh, human caught inside of circumstance, sometimes we don't understand what's what's kind of going on. And it's and again, it's either hard to articulate or, I mean, it took me a little while to tell anybody else other than my wife what had happened mm-hmm. to me because I still was trying <coughs> to figure it out. Uh, and asking then, right. you know, other people yeah. like a, a guy I knew down the road that had hunted for years in his life, a local farmer friend of mine, and, 